Democracy is a Greek word that comprises of the two words, demos, which means people, and kratos, which means rule. That's because the ancient Greek politicians and philosophers came up with it. There is mainly two types of democracy. The first type is direct democracy. It is when the people directly deliberate and decide on legislation, like in the form of referendums where people are asked to vote on a certain law, or initiatives where people create and vote on a petition that includes a certain law, to force the government to either do it or ask the rest of the public in a vote whether to do it or not. The second type is representative democracy, where people elect representatives to deliberate and decide on legislations for them, like in parliamentary or presidential democracy. Nowadays, most countries use liquid democracy, which is the mixture of both forms. And the backbone of this system is voting of the people, where if you get the majority of votes, you are declared the winner, and if the results are extremely close, there will be a recount. And if you don't get the majority, you can still ask for a recount. And if that didn't change the result, you can still say that you won regardless on Twitter, until enough people believe your lies. If you're an average internet consumer, and by that I mean you are 24-7 online, then you have probably came across this video of a weather forecast man pronouncing this town's very long name. With cloudy skies, but in the sunshine in northwest Wales at RAF Mona, just up the road from Clanbyr Pushwing, it's got Gerequin Drobos, Lantisilio Gogogog, the temperature got to 21 Celsius at 70 in Fahrenheit. Pretty badass, right? That town is located in the island of Anglesey, in Wales, and the meaning of that long name is St. Mary's Church in the hollow of the White Hazel near the rapid wire pool of Lanticelio of the Red Cave. And as you can guess, the reason for this long name is that it was a publicity stunt to bring more attention to the village. And with this name of 58 characters split into 19 syllables, it is the world's second longest name of a place. That's right, it looks like two people thought it was a good idea to give a stroke to whoever dares to pronounce the name of a place. However, the number one spot goes to a hill in New Zealand instead of a town. And the reason behind the naming is to honor a very famous explorer named Tamatea. And the 85 character name translates to the summit where Tamatea, the man with the big knees, the slider, climber of mountains, the land swallower who traveled about, played his nose flute to his loved one. Wow, quite a resume. And seeing how this guy got so many views on pronouncing the second longest name of a place in the world, then I'm going to try to one-up him, and I'll try to pronounce the first longest place of a name in the world, which I'm going to butcher, so sorry in advance. <clears throat> Tomata, Wakatan, Karen, please bring the kids back, I miss them, and Wakita Naho. Thank you. Bring on the views. The technology that allows AI to recognize objects and pictures is called Convolutional Neural Network, or CNN for short, and it works by feeding the AI millions of pictures to teach it key features, and then when it encounters similar pictures in the future, it uses its electronic brain, using its multi-layered network, to filter out key features while the final layer decides what it is seeing. And in 2014, some Google software engineers tried to perform an experiment on Google's Switch CNN, where instead of giving the CNN a picture to recognize the objects in it, they asked for the object and ordered the AI to create a picture with that object, and the results were interesting. While in some situations it managed to give a very convincing result of the object it was asked to create, but other times, like in the scenario of dumbbells, the AI kept creating pictures with dumbbells held by human arms. Because in Google Image Search, the results of dumbbells are filled with dumbbells held by human arms, so it thought it was a key feature. However, the experiment didn't stop there. Later, the AI was simply given an arbitrary image, and it was asked to enhance what it detects, but only in its final decision-making layer. Much like a child finding shapes in clouds. In fact, they made Google CNN do exactly that. With yet more interesting results. But... When the AI was simply given white noise images, and was ordered to do the same thing as before, it produced out of nowhere magnificent dreamy images, that the engineers called dreams. Now the whole program was codenamed Inception, as a reference to the famous movie, and later was dubbed 
the Deep Dream. In fact, you can mess around with the Deep Dream algorithm through the Deep Dream website, link in the description. But if you are interested, you can even check out the Deep Nightmare. All you have to do is just play Cyberpunk on PS4. Capitol Police uh, are on the House floor addressing the security incidents that are ongoing at the Capitol, saying we had a breach at the Capitol building. Reporters who are on site are tweeting pictures of protesters uh, wearing red Make America Great Again hats. Uh, who Violence has erupted in downtown Washington, forcing Capitol Hill into lockdown as pro-Trump supporters clash with police. Where were they when we wanted to raid Area 51? All right, let's go. What? <sighs> Atlantis is Greek for the island of Atlas, and it is a fictional island that Plato came up with in one of his three famous fictional dialogues, titled to Maius, Critias, and Hermocrates. Those three dialogues are titled after the three fictional characters that came to talk with Plato, forming a very famous trilogy of dialogues, but in reality there is only one and a half, because for some reason Critias is left incomplete and Hermocrates was never written, even that his character was present in the other dialogues, and Atlantis was mentioned in the unfinished part, which is Critias, where he talked about an island that was owned by Poseidon, and in that island, Poseidon fell in love and married a mortal woman named Clato, and they had many children, and their first child was Atlas, who was a demigod. The island was later passed to him, and that's how it got its name. And then it was passed to his children and grandchildren over generations. And so, in the first generations of Atlantis citizens, they had in them the virtues of gods. And that made them extremely kind and friendly, and non caring about luxury or mortal goods. So they lived in a utopia. But after many generations, they became less godly and more human. And so they started losing their virtue and became more greedy and abusive with their power. And that angered Zeus. So he wanted to punish them. And he did that by gathering all the deities. And they stood up in the center of the earth. And then he pointed his finger at Atlantis. And then he said, Well, no one actually knows, because that's where the story of Critias cuts off, but from the story of Timaeus, we know that it sank because of earthquakes. People kept seeking whether this fictional island in this fictional dialogue was real or not, because Plato himself said it's a story passed through generations of poets and priests, even that his dialogues are the only source of it right now. Some assume that it is located in the Mediterranean Sea, Others believe that it is in the Atlantic Ocean, Ireland, or somewhere in Europe. But in April 2020, while people were occupied by the COVID pandemic, new footage has surfaced that shows ruins in the Mediterranean Sea. That scientists are seriously considering whether it is Atlantis or not. And I highly recommend you watch it. Link in the description. And oh, also in the description, shout out to Binksy Quip for including me in her animation meme. That was really nice. Do you... Do you want to talk about it? No. Maybe if you talk about it, it's gonna make you feel better. How? How is talking about my girlfriend leaving me for some other guy that I don't know is gonna make anything better? Maybe... And then she kicked me out of the house and now I have to move dozens of miles to my parents' house how is talking about that going to make things better? Well, at least it can get worse. Did you have to say it? That's it! Even the battery died on me! Well, it can get worse. We are in the middle of nowhere and there is no signal. Yeah, I mean, it can get worse than that. Alright, now it can get... <sighs> no.
Now you can say it can't get any worse. Actually, it can. I'm sorry I didn't confess to you before, but I have to come clean. What are you talking about? <sighs> I am the other guy. What? I am the one whom your girlfriend left you for. I swear I didn't mean to. One day we were just talking alone and one thing led to another and... Ah! You are right! Now it can't get any worse! <laughs> but it can. What? It always can get worse. And this isn't the first time it happened. And you know that already. You know the truth already. Truth? What truth? The truth that I am not real. I'm just a figment of your imagination. You already killed me. And right now, you are in solitary confinement. Playing this moment in your head over and over. And you have finally learned your lesson. That you should never say, It can't get any worse. 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 It can't get any worse.